Okay, welcome to 1063 Comics. This is your week 16, and this is going to be your long-form video. So sit back, enjoy, like the video, leave a comment. I just got back from the comic shop, so if you um, want to watch this video and kind of go to your shop and use it to pick out stuff, that's awesome. I just enjoy talking about comics, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I did try to do a few of these live, but it just didn't work out really well. Um, my All of my stuff is a little bit older, my recording stuff. So, I think I got about 30 books, 29 or 28 books. Cobra Commander is one of them. Let's see. No. And... Again, I've said it with the other issues. This is issue four. Um, not a super huge G.I. Joe fan, but I will say I really like Cobra Commander. Uh, the art is really cool. The story is good. Um, it kind of has it all. It, and it fits in with the, whatever they're calling it, Energon verse or whatever. So the art's good. It's consistent with that, you know, Void Rivals and Transformers and all of that. <clears throat> so it is really good. You know, if you haven't picked it up yet, issue four, I mean, I'm sure you can find the other issues. But, um, you know, maybe just grab the first trade. They're, they're probably already being ordered. Animal Pounds. I'm, I said in a one-minute video, um, <clears throat> with Feral, uh, this, uh, Beneath the Trees, um, Man's Best. Like, Beneath the Trees, I remember. Feral, I remember. Man's Best, I kind of remember. But Animal Pound, I think, is the one with the dogs and the cats and the rabbits and stuff. But, uh, you know what? It, it was good. This is issue... Three. And there's the art style there. So this one is more, so beneath the trees, if you follow that, that's, you know, human-shaped animals that talk and interact with other animals. This one's more um, animals that, you know, communicate with each other. But it hasn't been bad. It's been good. <clears throat> Spawn. To be honest, I stopped getting spawn. I have up to issue one, 170 or something like that. <clears throat> and a few issues here and there in, in that range up until I bought a couple around 300. And then I think I have one at 311. Um, but I have not been buying it consistently. But I did buy issue 350 and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so. For two ninety nine, I mean, it's hard to say no when I know that it's going to have really good art, and I know the story's going to be good, so I grabbed it, and I've been great to get it. This cover is really, um, really thick cardstock, which it definitely feels different than, you know, that Animal Pound, which I think is, no, that's Boom. But yeah, it's been good, and it, like it's you can't really get it across there, but it's like very dense cover, which is good. There'll be lots of nine point nines for those. I'll tell you, I'm I'm at a bit of a crossroad with the grading. I have um, some books that I have to pick up on Monday. Thanks, Bleak. Um, if he's watching, that are that are all pressed and ready to go, and I have to decide which company to send them to, and I'm kind of for my own stuff. Like if it was just me personally, stuff stuff that I plan on keeping for a very very long time, I'll probably send to CBCS. But stuff that I want to sell, uh, it's too just so much of a difference right now between CGC and CBCS, and. You know, I know it's not with everything, and it's not, you know, 100%, but for the most part, 
It is, but when you hold the like a CGC slab in your hand and you hold a CPCS slab in your hand, it's clear which one's better. Um, so I'm kind of at a loss there. Um, I don't really know what to do. But I have about, I'm going to guess, 200 books to go. Um, you know, and I try to keep it 50% for, you know, 50% I'm going to keep and 50% I'll sell. Uh, back to Dead X-Men. You know, I said it in the one minute, one minute video. I don't really remember what's happening in this. Like, hopefully as I start to read it, I'll remember. Um, that is a major, major problem, in my opinion, as someone that's, you know, been reading X-Men since I was 14. Um, it's a big problem as to, you know, like, if I can't keep track of it, then how can anybody else keep track of it? And, like, I can keep track of Wolverine. I know what's going on in that. I keep track of X-Force. I know what's going on in that. But the rest of the X-Books, and especially with them, which I'm happy about the rebooting into... Um, The Uncanny again, which will pick up some legacy numbering. Well, they get uh, Apocalypse into the fight here. That's good. Like, the art is good. Like, there's nothing wrong with the art. There's nothing wrong with the story. I enjoy both. It's just the... Like, keeping track of everything. Uh, another printing for Ultimate Spider-Man number one. I mean, we've talked about this issue a lot. This is the third printing. I don't think we need to look inside of this one. But I do like that cover. Um, and Ultimate Spider-Man is now where, you know, I get real enjoyment from reading those books. So next up, we've got Miles Morales. This has been good. I like Miles. I didn't start out on... Uh, Camp Miles because I read those issues uh, just prior to Fallout 4, you know, the death of Spider-Man and Peter Parker dying in the Ultimate Universe, and it's not that they did it, they introduced Miles poorly, uh, it was just, it was, a, it was a surprise, so it was kind of a shock for that Peter Parker to, to be killed off after you know, so many issues. Um, I think it got up to 150 or 60 uh, before his death one. Um, but now I'm on, I'm all on board. I really like Miles. I think he brings what, you know, he, uh, in my opinion, if I was Marvel and I'm not, um, Miles lets you do all of the stories that they seem to want to do with Amazing Spider-Man. And then they could just let Amazing Spider-Man be what Ultimate Spider-Man is and then do something crazy with Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that, and I'm not the only person to think this, but the, the quality of the story is there and it's the story that people want to read in Ultimate Spider-Man. That's, and that's why. Um, speaking of which, I, I love this cover. I meant to look, I didn't look before I did my one minute thing. Uh, let's see. I hate it when Marvel does this. Like DC, it's right on the cover. So it looks like this one is... Because I... Belin Ortega. I like to, to know who does the covers and be able to find out. Because then, when I'm looking through the previews, I can order the person's covers again. And DC makes that easy, because if I can't recognize their art, then I can at least just look at the bottom and see. Cool art. Spider-Woman is a completely underrated character, in my opinion. The, the Unlike Spider-Man, where they kind of keep them locked in, like Miles is kind of locked into that age range now, and, you know... Peter's locked in in his own series. Spider-Woman's always kind of at least shown progression. You know, 
there was the whole run where she was pregnant. Then she had the baby. Then, you know, now the baby's lost. And how does she deal with that? Such a great character with great backstory. I'd like to see uh, it be a bit more popular and, and be an ongoing type of series. But it just seems like it constantly gets uh, rebooted and redone. But love that cover. Spider Boy, this is the Peach Momoko cover. Um, Spider Boy, yeah, whatever. Spider Boy. I'm not really a fan right now. Maybe, maybe I'll get convinced later, but they're just dragging it on for so long, and I get it. It doesn't have to be a rush for sure, but when each issue goes by and something doesn't get revealed, to me, it's just annoying. And, you know, maybe they're going for a different market. Maybe they're after the the young kids that, that want to see that. But um, that's not me. You know, I want to see some something change. Venom. Uh, what if Venom? This has been great. First issue, uh, Venom took over She-Hulk in kind of like an alternate Earth or whatever. And the next issue was Wolverine. And then this issue, it's uh, Doctor Strange. It's been really good. I love this cover. I love what if stories. They just remind me of being a kid and like all of the different potential like crossovers and what if, you know, Hulk fought Superman or what if Hulk fought Thing or and all that stuff. Uh, they're just awesome. One of these days I'm going to get the uh, omnibus for, for the original what if just so I can read them again my kids can read them but this has been good Oof, that's awesome we can show that it's not too close to the end that's an awesome splash page right there that's great this is um manuel garcia great job on the pencils some good looking stuff in here Then we've got Peter Parker, Spider-Man, again, talking about these two characters. I love seeing these characters together. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, when I was growing up, it was the Flash and Spider-Man were always kind of teaming up and doing stuff where I like to see, you know, Miles and Peter together. And this looks like a Delgado, or Ramos, sorry. Uh, let's see. Yeah looked like Ramos art. I love his run on Spectacular Spider-Man. I loved his Venom art. Um, there's just, you know, I'm a huge fan and I think he's perfect for, you know, these two characters. And I love reading their stories together. So looking forward to reading that as well. This uh, Mace Window has been good, but it was all about this cover for me for this week, the uh, Master and Prentice cover. Um, <clears throat> last week was the Bale and Skull and um, Shinhati cover, which is their first time on a comic. So if you see that book, you know, it might not be a bad idea to pick it up if you, you know, speculate at stuff like that. Considering how, you know, utterly lame, like, um, in one of these other volumes of Mace Windu is Ahsoka's first Marvel comic book appearance, and it's really lame. It's a lame first appearance. This is a story that takes uh, place in the past, obviously. It's good. I've liked it. It's a younger Mace, you know, so that's cool. You get to see him at full power and all that stuff. Um, obviously... It's not going anywhere because, uh, spoiler alert, he doesn't make it. Or did he? Um, this one, this is tough for me to, you know, when I put away stuff, I kind of pile it when I'm doing these piles and like, is it, does it go in the Spider-Man pile now? Does it go in the Avengers pile? Like, where does this go? Um, I wasn't going to pick up this issue, but I did hear that there's something that happens in it. So I decided to pick it up. 
I wasn't a fan of the art in the first one. It's just that kind of rushed art we've been talking about in the last bunch of weeks. We just don't see, you know, like, I, I, I think of Natasha as a very smart and cunning character. And it was interesting with her and the symbiote to see, you know, is she going to use it for disguises? Is she going to use it to morph? Is she going to use it in different ways? And they haven't really done any of that yet. So that's what's kind of losing me on this series. It kind of reminds me of, you know, on the Wayback Machine, when uh, Emma Frost took over Iceman's powers and, you know, pushed him, showed him that he was just kind of wandering around throwing snowballs and she did all this other crazy stuff. So it was very cool. Uh, that Hawkeye book is like that. I want to see, you know, I want to see her do that stuff. Uh, we've got Avengers Twilight here. This has been good too. Um, you know, I mean, dystopian future, uh, not a lot of heroes. You don't know who's on whose side. Some of the people you thought were good were bad. Some of the people that were bad were good. And they have to fight against, you know, the government, tyranny, bad guys, the system to, you know, get people to see a new way. It's good. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, uh, you know, a story we've seen a bunch of times. So first up, uh, for Ultimate Black Panther, we have a second print of two. So then I've picked up, I think, two issues of, or three issues of uh, number three. So I bought this cover. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've talked about it before, but I'm a huge Storm fan. I'm loving Storm in the X-Men 97 cartoon. Uh, Storm is great in the comics. Storm is great in X-Men. Uh, just a great character, and it just drives me crazy that Marvel, like that she doesn't have like an ongoing series like Wolverine does. Um, there has to be uh, a market there for that. I mean, because she doesn't, it would signal that they, Marvel doesn't believe there is or has determined that there there isn't. But I just don't get it. I'm a huge Storm fan, and I just want an ongoing series. Like, let's get into Storm. Like, there's so many great stories you could do. So there's the design variant. And then I have just a cover A. But let's see. The art in this is good. They're really putting a lot of focus on the Ultimate line. So, you know, I think they're giving the artist some breathing room and the story writer some breathing room to, like, you know, take their time and kind of work on things and get everything nice and tight. Um, but, yeah, that's my, that's my Storm rant. Uh, I just wish Storm had her own ongoing series. You know, what? like, you tell me, what do you think? Like, what's the reason why that Storm doesn't have an ongoing series? You know, maybe maybe reveal that to me in the comments. Let's talk about it. So uh, this one I've been looking forward to reading. So this is the first issue. I realized that I didn't have the Freira cover of issue one. So they did have one, so I picked that up today, um, which I covered last week, I think, or the week before. And then... I picked up this cover, which is one of the variants. Um, I'm not sure. Is this a text? Yeah, this is a text cover. And then that's the Ferreira A cover for issue two. It's one of my new favorite artists for sure. He did the uh, interiors for Spine Tingling Spider-Man. He's been doing a, the covers for Carnage. And um, his Venom and stuff is awesome. His Ghost Rider is awesome. Um, really looking forward to 
seeing him really do some awesome covers with this stuff. So this follows more the origin of how, you know, what's, what the hood is going to do with these, with the spirit of vengeance. And, you know, ultimately, in my opinion, I don't know for sure, but what, that's, that's cool how he's going to fall from it and how blaze is going to be back we all know right like this isn't a shocker for anybody that you know the red hood will not have the powers of the ghost rider for more than this series i mean there's it's just not going to happen it doesn't happen in comics very rarely anymore and i don't believe it's going to happen now but hopefully the story's good while we watch did i leave one up there oh yeah i did Then we've got Titans. I kind of tie Titans and um, Nightwing together. Um, Titans, I realized yesterday, I was watching an auction, and I realized it was like for a issue 75, an Adam Hughes cover of Starfire. And I'm like, oh, I don't really remember that. And I looked it up, and there's... I don't know how many issues in that series, and I don't have any of them. It's weird, because I have the whole first, you know, the new Teen Titans with Wolfman and Perez. I have their first appearance in uh, whatever it is, DC Presents 26. But, um, and I have the second volume, and maybe the third, but maybe not. But yeah, I don't have that one. Actually, you know what, I think that is the third one that I don't have. But I've been liking this. It's interesting to read, you know, especially now that the Titans have kind of um, taken over on, on more of a world stage and they're involved with Waller and all that stuff. And that kind of goes with Nightwing. Nightwing is, you know, doing stories on his own, but it's closely tied with, you know, stuff with the Titans. Not bad. You know, I'm finding Nightwing is kind of on... Huh, this is funny. The pizza place. Marvin George's. That's funny. We all know what that is. The stories in Nightwing haven't been wowing me as much as they used to be. And next up we've got... Superman. This is the House of Brainiac, you know, whatever. I don't even know if it tells you, but I think it's the first part or the second part. Doesn't say. Well, you could see some Lobo action. I'm not a, you know, a huge Lobo fan. I enjoyed Lobo in um, the old Justice League run with Batman and Guy Gardner and Lobo and all that. That was a good time. Which is another kind of collected one I have to get because it was so good. And we've got the Lyrex Batman Offworld cover. This has been delayed for a long time. There's what the A cover looks like. And you know, I've liked this series. I was surprised. I didn't think I was going to like it. I don't know if, if this is like completely outside of where Batman is now. It almost looks like who did this art on the inside? No one? It's weird. No, no title page. Weird. Maybe it says at the end. Kind of like when movies switched. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So the pencils are by Doug Mankey. Mankey? Something? To me, it's um, very uh, Gary Frank, which is fine. I, I like the art in this. It's really good. 
new issue of Wonder Woman. This has been really good, so everybody's against the Amazons right now. <clears throat> but no one knows why. Well, none of the readers know why. And the whole thing is kind of written like the scene in the first Wonder Woman movie where they're down in the trenches and she has to go up and cross no man's land. It, it's kind of that vibe. It's really good. It's a good read. I'm, I hadn't been getting Wonder Woman before this, but I did pick this up starting with issue one. And I'm sure this whole thing will be a trade if you're interested in it. You can't go wrong with Lobos on the cover. The A cover is good too. And the interior art is good. I like it. I can't remember where it left off last issue though. We'll see if I remember when I do it, but it, it has been good. So I recommend this one for sure. And like I've said, DC has been doing some really good reads. So next up and the last title I have is Catwoman. So we'll start with the Nakayama A cover. I love that cover. Just his art is always, you know, I don't know the exact order he does them in, but I'm getting a pretty good idea of, of them, actually. So it's cool, Catwoman in Space, who would have known? It carries on the uh, Nine Lives story. I don't know if this is the end or not. Let's take a look. Uh, nope, it doesn't say. Maybe it says at the end. Nope. I think it continues it. But this hasn't been bad. It's been pretty good. Read. I've enjoyed it. I don't remember what she's trying to steal from space, to be honest, but, you know, it's like Fast X or whatever it was, you know, Cars in Space. Um, whatever they want to do. So then we have the Derek Chu cover, and then we've got the, I think this is the 1 in 25 Lee Rex cover. Awesome covers. So good. So last thing I have, I just remembered, are these. I wonder if it fits up here. Just fit. Hana Tank. So, um, when I was a kid, Haunted Tank was in GI Combat, which had Sergeant Rock and just GI stories. And I loved reading it. It's one of those books that I read before I knew I liked comics because I would get them from whoever had them. And they would be all folded over and folded into your back pocket and all of that. These stories are, this is a collection of all of the Haunted Tank stories. So it doesn't have any of the GI Combat stories, just the Haunted Tank, which started in 87, GI Combat 87. And so the first volume and the second volume cover all the way up to issue 156, and it went to 288. And I'm guessing that at the time they printed these, then the rest of them, there wasn't enough interest to make that third and final volume that would have all of them in it. So I'm going to have to probably try to track down those other issues. And plus they'd be in color if I did that too. Um, these stories are, are awesome. I love reading them. You know, I can put aside the, you know, the Confederate flag and, and you know, that it's a Confederate general and whatnot, uh, Jeb Stewart. I can put all that aside because I just remember reading them when I was a kid and thinking it was the coolest thing ever that, a ghost was helping a tank. Um, I just think that that's really cool. And so when I read these, you know, I kind of get a, a lot of nostalgia and remember, you know, I haven't run into one yet that I remember reading. Um, but I probably started reading after these volumes, I'm going to guess, because I would, would have been reading them in the probably mid to late 70s at the earliest, which is right around when these ended, I think. So... Really cool, 
Um, I picked them up off of eBay. Just soft cover, whatever they are, showcase presents, you know, really cool. You know, there's no, this was kind of, um, I call it, you know, I don't know what, I don't know anything about the showcase books. Let's put it that way. I don't know if they're made this way or not, but this is a very bare bones um, collection of the books. And it says on the inside, this one doesn't say it, but it has all of the, the credits. So if you're a Kubert fan, there's a ton that he did the covers for or did the interior art for. And it kind of gives you a breakdown of not so much the, because the writer is all the same in all of them. It's uh, Robert Kahanger. But it just gives you the all of the who does the art. It's really cool. I was going to say that they're very unpretentious. There's no like multiple four words. You know, there isn't like a best best military stories ever written type, you know, quotes or anything like that. It's just here's the books. Here they are. They're in black and white. Enjoy them. And that's what I'm doing. So anyway, upon a tank. Let me know what you think. Do, do you, anybody else read these? Anyway, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You know, if you haven't subscribed, then please consider it. I usually just mention it at the end when no one else is watching. Um, it's just a small channel that I have, and I just do it because I love talking about comics. My favorite day is Wednesday, going to the comic shop, getting to talk to, you know, all those guys that come in about comics. It's the same group of us that are there on Wednesdays. You know, I I have bought Comic-Con tickets in advance. As soon as the thing finishes, I buy the next year's one when they're on sale. I'm putting it in my calendar. Like So the one that comes to the falls is in, in June. It'll be there for three days, and I'll be there. If anybody's watching and they're there, I'll be in my green shirt. Come up and say hello. You know, that would be awesome. It would be crazy to actually run into somebody at the Comic-Con that watches this. Um, I don't take any of that for granted, so I appreciate everybody's time watching, and thanks so much. Have a great day.